So I want to continue what I started on the Deuteronomy 28. And I, I want to pick up from the last point that I made, the fact that the reason why certain rivers don't, don't join forces with other rivers so they enter the sea is because when they make that mistake of joining these other rivers before they join the sea, they will change everything about the fluidity of the system that they are working with. You need to understand the formation of water and the whole flow and currency of water is such that it is moving at, at a certain frequency that is beyond the physical eyes, and not just the physical eyes, but beyond a lot of the machineries that our science are working with now. So as most of us are just seeing water flowing down into the sea, you should know that each molecule of the water is under obedience from the queen or the king of that particular current of water or river that is flowing into the sea. Even when you think about the lakes, the lakes evaporate, right? So the whole cycle continues to happen. It ne water is never stable. Water is never stagnant. Water is constantly flowing. Even the water that you see packed there is constantly flowing. And it's such that the timing of, of, of its fluidity is so in sync that it will never miss any window or opportunity that it needs to access. So when you bring it to our human lives, you realize that there are certain conversations, there are certain relationships, there are certain people that we come into that we are not meant to be into, we are not meant to conversate with. There are certain periods that we are not supposed to be in certain relationships or certain conversations or certain jobs or you are not supposed to pick up certain opportunities. Once you mix those windows, you find yourself at the back of a certain opening that you're supposed to be in and you miss it. Now you go against the current of waves. You go against the current of energies. Because energy is a constant vibration. It's constantly moving. It's constantly traveling. Once you go against the current of it, now you begin to struggle because the force of nature, the force of fluidity is now working against you. That is why every relationship is an opening, it's an opportunity, it's timing. Once you move in the frequency of that which you need to get closer to, all of a sudden everything makes sense. Have you ever been in a situation where you met somebody and everything is just perfect? Sometimes it gets so perfect it becomes unreal so you distance yourself. Because you're moving in fluidity, you're moving in sync, you're moving in the divine timing. When I say divine timing, now it's only lack of a better word. I'm using that word to help you understand the kind of system that is operating here. The dimensions, the intelligence are moving and working with set intelligence that is beyond anything that we've come close yet. That is why we are all, or we all should be on this journey of coming into who we are. Once we come into who we are, everything would fall accurately in line. I always use my plants. So many plants around, but all these plants are attracting different insects, different birds, different flies, different bugs, different animals to it. You understand? Because all these plants are singing different or sending different, any different waves, different electronic waves out there. Different frequencies out there, and these frequencies are going to be responded or corresponded by a certain energy that carries the same frequency. That's why certain trees attract certain plants. Certain fruit attract certain birds. Certain vegetables attract certain bugs. Not everything is attracting everything. You know what I'm saying? So it's just as human beings, you cannot just think that you are just bringing in somebody because you feel or think. Remember, your feelings and thinkings are just body-based. They're not happening beyond your physical body. So anything you are making decision on, or any decision that you make based on physical experiences, you should know it's out of balance, out of shape, out of who you are. Your choices, your decisions should not have anything to do with your physical senses. That's just what I'm trying to say. When you move in fluidity, everybody and everything you come into is so perfect and so on point. When you go against fluidity, you will strike it. it doesn't matter. That's how you can set somebody up with a business of about $10 million, and within the next month, next year, everything crumbles down. You set up somebody with a business of $100, and then the next year, everything becomes blossom. 
Everything blossoms. Everything comes to a place where it's just beautiful because they are moving in the fluidities of their time frames or time stamps. That is how water goes into the sea. So spirit or energy is science at the same time. Because these two fronts are all saying you have to try it and see if it works, then you move with it. They are not saying just believe, just have faith. That's so a science can easily marry spirituality and spirituality can easily marry science without any struggle or without any divorce heading anywhere. Because they all are going after the same thing. Anyway, this is just a foundational message that I was trying to say, just continuing where I left off. So um, let's go straight into it, all right? Aquaba, Aquaba, Aquaba. Welcome to Melanated True. My name is Kojo Bente. I'm always honored and humbled to come your way. I want to say a big thank you to all the gods. The powers of the air that I mentioned, the powers of the air, the power of the water, the powers of the fire, ether that governs everything. And of course, I want to say a big thank you to our creator, our father, the one that started it all. I always teach you something. The creator is not be, is beyond life. The creator is not within life. Life didn't start before the creator. The creator existed, so life came into being. You know what I'm saying? So we say a big thank you to the Mother Earth. As I say, we are grateful. All the powers that govern says, the gods in your backgrounds, the gods in my background. No, to be honest, now if you're a job, you can't get a job. We say a big thank you to Ago Macha. We say a big thank you. We say a big thank you. Now if you're a now of a four then champini a giant. We say a big thank you to um what do you call it? Nanam Farmer, we are so much grateful. And now the newest addition to the family, my baby last, the the one that are pampering. Boy, 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 boy. Nana, I'm so grateful to you. Um thank you for joining the family. Hope you hope you enjoy your stay and we only ask listen. Once you're in this family, I'll make you popular. That that's my job. My job is to pimp gods out. I pimp gods to, to the rest of the world. So once welcome, I'll make you famous, I promise you. But you also have to do your job. If you don't do your job, I won't make you famous. That I won't do. But welcome guys, and I thank everybody that is in tune. Thank you for all your comments. Thank you for all your questions. Please keep them coming. If you're watching this video for the first time and you are looking for a family that you want to be a part of. And I'm not saying throwing just the words out as family. No, I mean this. This is our lives. This is what we do. This is for real. This is not for the cameras. This is not fake. We are a family. And if you want to be a part of this family, the description is in the link below. Click on it. It will bring you to the WhatsApp community. The rest will be history. I love you guys. Thank you. Let's go straight into it. Okay. So I'm continuing straight to where we got. We go to the Lord shall, Deuteronomy 28, 7. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. Mm. You should know. You attract whatever you think. <laughs> it's that simple. You attract the thought processes that you put out there. These are energies that you're building. And once you consume this thought and this thought becomes a reality within your frame of thought, you definitely attract it, right? So I've been at certain occasions where certain people that are praying would, would, would focus much on, and, and I'm not saying don't, but so let, let's uh, set an example. Let's say I'm praying a prayer and I'm saying that as I'm traveling, I cancel, I break, I destroy every road accident, every accident that a car is going to have. I cancel it, I change it, I do this. When you, when you keep doing it, what do you think is going to happen on the road eventually? Your prayer has to be effective. Your prayer has to work, right? So that accident needs to happen for it to affirm to you <laughs> that indeed the things you said in the prayer is working. So when you call for accident and you're constantly saying, I rebuke any accident, you eventually going to fall in an accident. If you set out on the road and know very well that you're going and coming back in safety and everything is good, everything is nice, no accident is happening. 
You understand? A lot of people sit in their cars and the minute they go there, they start praying. Your prayers have to be in your chambers. You do it. Of course, in the car you can do additions. But if the one in the secret place is not done, forget about it. It is not going to work. Anyway, let me stop messing around. So he says what? Enemies. The Lord God would smite the enemies before you. Eight. The Lord shall condemn the blessings upon thee in thy storehouses. And in all that thou settest thine hand unto, he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord has given to thee. So this should be a good land, right? The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself, as he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandment of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. So it's obvious if you don't keep these commandments, these blessings will not happen to you. Can we be honest with ourselves? Like I'm, I'm just having this conversation. Can we honestly be honest with ourselves? When you look around you, who are the most blessed, according to these blessings, right? Who are the most blessed out people around you? According to these blessings, I'm, I'm not even going any far. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouse and in all that. So let's even just take your storehouse. Hmm? Compare yourself to those who don't obey these commandments. Those who don't even go to the churches you go to. Those who don't pay their tithe, who don't do all these things. And let's see if these blessings are on you more, are on them more. Because if the Lord is promising all these blessings, if you obey his commandment, then automatically you ought to be more blessed than anybody in the world because, or anybody around you because this is the God supposedly to be the God that created everything. So therefore, is he is giving your way, is he is giving you his word and saying that the, the more you get, the more you keep his laws, the more he's going to bless you, then what it literally means is that every person that keeps the laws of this God don't have to suffer pain, don't have to suffer all these losses and what have you, always have to gloat and, and joy and triumph in wealth and goodness and in success. I've been in the churches, that is not the case. In the church, it's only the pastor and the leadership. So the people that are enjoying certain blessings in the congregation is the one that is footing the bill of these blessings that the law some way, somehow, misses the address of the lead pastors and lead ones. And these people are the ones that are teaching you this and telling you that you ought to be blessed simply by obeying the laws, not by doing anything else, not by working hard, not by doing some investment, not by building something, not by creating something, by just obeying the laws of the God, Lord, Lord, God, whatever they were, you are going to be blessed. This is the remedy of success to the God of the Bible. It literally means is that when you do every single thing this God is telling you, you should be blessed out. Right? Obeying and keeping his commandments. But we have a lot of people in the churches that obey and keep his commandment and are poured out. When I say poor, I'm just trying to make my, I don't even know whether it's a word that exists. Poured out. Blessed out. Poured. You understand what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? If, if this God has what it takes to bless you, you don't have to do nothing. When Corona came and a lot of pastors and people were screaming and hungry and crying and asking, oh, how the congregation going to come? And da, 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 da. They were hungry. They were complaining about everything because what? Their God could not bless them. It's the congregation that is blessing them. You are the one that are blessing the pastors. You are the one that are sending to them. Why is it that anytime any pastor ever needed anything, they called you to show up in the church and give to the church? If this God says, and oh yeah, they will tell you that, oh, for the Lord to bless you, he has to go through man. I get it. If the God indeed is blessing you when he, he has to go through man, 
the, the language is simple. He has to go through man. You should be sitting in your homes as pastors, doing your work, going to the villages, doing all these works that you do, and the men should be chasing you because the God, Lord God, has instructed them to bring a blessing your way. And they should be chasing you all around and giving you, but it shouldn't be the pastors have to literally put, quell your hands behind your back, squeeze you to give every single thing you are making onto the altar. And they tell you what, when you don't bring these monies to their altar, you are being disobedient to the God. I'm reading the blessings with you. Deuteronomy 28 verses 9, and the Lord shall command blessings. Do you know what it means to command blessings? So just by this verse alone, blessings should rush your way. Wait a minute. If I'm the one that is teaching you all these things, and I'm telling you that this is how it works, Shouldn't it work for me first? Why do the pastors get angry when the congregation don't give? Why do they call them disobedient and, and dishonoring the God? Do not steal from the God. Did the God put any money in your account? How are you stealing from the God? Has any God put any money in your account? It's your money. And you are taking it there. How, how, how on earth are you stealing from him? First and foremost, we will get there. You should understand that the God of the Bible, the God of Israel, admitted that there were other cities that were more powerful than the children of Israel, doing so well, great and fierce cities. These cities obviously did not honor the God of the Bible, yet these cities were blessed. So I'm asking you a question. If these cities did not keep these commandments of the God of the Bible, yet they were blessed, how on earth were they getting blessed? The God of the Bible is supposed to block everything out and not allow anybody else that is not keeping his commandment get blessed. So how on earth were all these other cities and nations and countries getting blessed? Where did they get a blessings from? If a God is saying, I'm commanding you with blessing, they show up and they turn up. The God doesn't get it confused and say, I'm commanding a blessing on you. And at the same time, they miss the blessing and go and go and exchange the blessing. The blessings already all of a sudden becomes a curse. How does that work? If this God is indeed who he claims to be, not a single pastor should take offering in the churches. I double dare any pastor. If this God has power to command blessings to come upon you, you don't, do you get it? Let me paint a picture. The creator created everything and commanded air to come into your nostril every time. Have you ever chased after air? The creator created the sun. Have you ever chased after the sun? The creator created the moon. Created everything, the plant, the grass, the weed that is growing at the back of your, the creator created. Have you ever chased after the weed to grow at the back of your house? Sometimes certain herbs shows up in your house and you have no idea where it came from. This is what it means to command nature to come to you as the creator has. So if this God is commanding blessing, what has the blessing of this God got to do with the hard-earned money that the congregation is getting? Some congregation members getting five, six, seven jobs just to keep up. And yet this pastor will tell you, if you don't bring your tithe, you have to, didn't the God of the Bible know that this father, this mother, this parent, it has to work seven, five, eight, nine jobs just to get ends meet for the children and the family? How's the God of the Bible not seeing that? How's the God of the Bible not even seeing that the money that a woman is bringing to the church 
offering plate is coming from the son that is gang banging and selling drugs and selling all these things on the street and is bringing to the mother. The mother brings it to you and you praise your God for somebody that went to kill somebody over the night, somebody that went to steal and brought the money to the church. If we can actually trace where money goes through before it gets to the church, you will be blown away how this money comes to these churches. Yet the things they are doing behind the scene, the God of righteousness, don't see them. I'm not speaking out of context. I know it's that I've seen pastors preach and prophesy to people who are doing illegal business and tell them they will do well, they will succeed. I've seen pastors rip people off. No, not pastors. In, um, I've seen pastors honor congregational members, rip people, corrupt businessmen and women. Yet when they are having activities in the church, these are those that will come and sit in the front pews. And these are those that get prayed for the most. I double dare the God of the Bible to go into the account, to go into their business books, to, to check how they conduct their businesses. Didn't the, 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 the commandment, doesn't the commandment apply to these people? You might ask you a question, doesn't the commandment apply to these people? So when this God is saying, I command you a blessing, I'm waiting to see this God actually show up. I have gods around me. I can literally, listen, we can, run, we can do this. I can literally sit home, not go anywhere, not do anything. Just sit in this house. And I'm telling you, for six months, I'll be good. Not just taking care of me, taking care of everybody around me. Because the gods will turn up. All I do is to pour my libations. They will show up. Money will come. That's what it means to command a blessing. I've never stood on any platform and asked anybody to bring any offering to me. Ever. When I was in the churches, I used to loan everybody, pay all the pastors and all that. I've never asked anybody for any money. But the gods from my fathers are always constant in my life, consistently. Even when I don't know how they're doing it, they're still doing it. This is when you know there's a God around you. You understand what I'm saying? This is when you know there's a God around you. This is when you know there's an energy around you. This is when you know there's an entity around you that loves to work. Love to do stuff, love to create stuff, love to bring things into being, has the power to. Any God that does not have money cannot give you money. The God of the Bible, the only thing he can give you is anger. He has anger management, he has anger in abundance. Go to the scriptures. He ain't got money. Every time you read the Bible and there was money to be got, it came from some people's heart. I'm reading this. You see what I'm saying? You understand? It's, it's ridiculous. But we read these things and we just skip through them. Not fully understanding them. And they tell you a Holy Spirit needs to explain these things that you're reading. I'm telling you, if that is the case, and I'm telling you things that you've never seen, things that are in the very Bibles that you, and you've never, then I have a bigger Holy Spirit than any pastor that, has, that reads this thing and don't even know what they mean. That is a tool for slavery. And the law shall establish thee in thee and holy people unto himself, as he had sworn unto thee. Thee and holy people. A, a holy people? A holy people? I don't even want to get into that. There's not a single person that is more holy than the people of the shrine. There's not a single person that knows what holy is than the people of the shrine. Than the gods of our fathers. How dare you lie to the gods? They'll show up. They'll let you know what you just said right now is an absolute lie. 
There's no, any priest that lies that mess around dies early. Either they are dying early, they become so shameful in their deeds, their children suffer because you decided to go a holy people. Tell me one, any person that ever walked with this Bible that was a holy person. Name me one. Is it the Romans? Is it the Brits? Name me one. Is it the Jews? Go to Hollywood. Do you know who is in charge of the biggest pornography um, um, companies? All this media and this fake, do you know who are in charge of these things? The fake news we are getting? The things that are happening in the world, do you know who is actually behind them? Name me one religious person that is holy. Name me one. No, you would oblige and do everything that this book is telling you to do because you're simply a slave. Have you ever seen a slave disobey the master? So you can do this and say that, well, how dare you tell me uh, there are no holy people who follow the Bible. I'm holy. I do this. I don't do this. You're a slave. I'm talking about people who actually understand what this book is for. It is supposed to be started by the Jews, right? Which one of them is holy? Then the, what do you call it? The Greeks came to take over, right? Who? Then the Romans. Who? Who? King James? Please. Who? But I said, I make you. Where did the God of the Bible make any people a holy people? I'm, I'm trying to find that out. Where? Adam? That's where you want to go. Adam? That at the first scent of trouble, betray the wife and say, is the woman you gave me. The woman. That's who you want to say holy? Abraham? Abraham that would abandon a mother and the daughter, a mother and the son into the bush because the first wife is saying, I don't, are you not a man? Don't you have the B words? Us? Don't you have that? Are you not able to say to your wife, no, my son and daughter are not going anywhere. My, 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 my wife and son are not going anywhere. Are you not a man? Abraham? Abraham lied. That's the holy man. I can show you Ghanaian priests that never did any wrong. In fact, I feel if I had even started spirituality, spirituality earlier in my days, I'd probably be one of the holiest people because I didn't, I would, I would, then I wouldn't be introduced to certain things that I can actually name by people are masters in knowing them and people can actually explain to you why certain companies do certain things the way they do. I'm not naming any names. But I'm just saying you know what I'm saying? People, listen. I wouldn't have been exposed to all these things. I would be one of the holy people. I'm telling you, like, I wouldn't even know the flavored things that I can't even say. I don't even know. People are master. People know the details. I, I'm speaking in parables, okay. My point is, name me one group of people that this Bible made them holy. David? David? Samuel? Listen, I, I can argue any person in the Bible. Samuel? More biased person ever on the face of the... Okay, let, let me. Samuel? When he was called to go and anoint the king, what did he say? David did not qualify because he was looking for face value. And looked at him and realized that David, and if you stated the pattern of the story of Samuel, Samuel was always rooting for Saul. Even though the God of the Bible appointed and anointed David to be king, Samuel was constantly rooting for Saul. The, so Samuel was not in agreement with the God of the Bible's choice to make David the king. Who in the Bible would you tell me holy? Miriam? Listen, guys, this book makes you holy. This book, listen, you can only be holy with this book if you are a slave. I'm telling you, you, you can never 
be successful, holy, righteous, independent, powerful with this book. You can never do that. It's not in the system of this book to allow you to do that. It's not possible. If you want to be successful according to the standards of this book, over 99.9% .9 of businessmen and women in the churches will all stand against this book. Holy. Do you know how many murders was caused by this book? Do you know how many killings, the killings of innocents, men and women, sons and daughters, do you know how many of them died because of this book? Holy, this book is a holy book. Do you know what a holy book is? Holy is not something that is described by words. Not to even talk about documented words. So therefore, our father's ways could not have been documented. Because once a human being have influence over the documents that are being put down, adjustments will be made to ensure that it suits the people that are making these documentation. You read the history of the Jewish people, they tell you, over 70 scribes or Levites sat down to tra transcribe the scriptures or to even keep writing the Torah from one generation. Over 70 people constantly all the time. 70 people. Who was the leader of these 70 people? If that leader had an agenda, you think that leader would not uh, uh, mislead and, and partially, unconsciously influence these 70 people to write the thing according to the descriptions of the leader? If I'm leading you, watch this. If I'm leading you and I tell you we got to correct something in history, right? I need 70 men. And I start telling these 70 men, I'm against this thing people do. I'm against this thing people do. But you know what? You guys go and sit down and write it according to how you are led. What do you think is going to come down in the book? Holy. Holy. Brothers were raping sisters in this book. Holy. This is the only book that Angels can be tempted by women to sleep with them, to, <laughs> to fall from their position. A woman can tempt a God. Are you crazy? Which God? So when, sometimes, when you take your time, I'm not saying you rush through this book. Take your time and read this book according to how it's presented to you. I can give you so many versions of this. And all that seated... Set thine hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord has given you. First and foremost, this God of the Bible didn't have any land to give. Let's argue it out. Which land? This God of the Bible is supposed to be the creator of everything. First and foremost, shouldn't the creator know the spaces that nobody is occupying so that he takes his people there and, and turn the entire land to a very fruitful land so that his people can go and occupy this land that is not occupied by anybody for them to enjoy it? No, but everywhere this God or the Bible took his people, people already occupied the land, worked the land, and made the land successful. Which, which land did the God of the Bible, the God of the Bible have to give? Which property? Whose property? Where did he get it? Who willed it to him? The land that I give you? Which land? If the land is yours to give, would you even allow anybody else to come and occupy it and work and sweat on the land and make it a success? What an abuser. You know, all these, all these evil businessmen that come around and see things flourish in the hands of, um, in, see things flourish in the hands of other businessmen and all of a sudden they go into, into, into these people and what do they do? They start taking away their businesses because they feel they have the money to take. These crooked businessmen, God of the Bible is a crooked businessman you can ever find on the face of the earth. Because he's constantly watching people 
to do something to success. It's not a God that can start a thing from scratch. You know I'm not making these things up. Then the Lord shall establish thee. Uh, let me even pass this holy people. The holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto thee. If thou shalt keep his commandment of the Lord thy God and walk in his way. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord. And all the people of the earth. So you need to understand. All the people. They shall see that indeed that the God of the Bible have called you. That's a code right there. I don't want to go into it now. And they shall be afraid of thee. What kind of creator thrives in fear? I'm trying to, I'm trying to understand that. What kind of creator enjoys seeing people afraid? What kind of creator thrives in seeing that people are wallowing in fear? Being terrified. And they would fear thee. Even animals are not afraid of each other. Do you know that? Even though they go to the cycle of knowing very well that they can be prey to some of these other predators, animals are never terrified. You can see an antelope seeing that there's a herd of lions and the antelope will still go up around trying to see what the lion got. Anything that causes you to be afraid is actually coming for your life. Most of these diseases that a lot of people, a lot of our brothers and sisters are suffering from are fear-related diseases. Anxiety-related diseases. Fear will kill you faster than any weapon on the face of the earth. But this God of the Bible thrives in fear. So that they, 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 would, they would be afraid of thee. So why would the creator want anything to be afraid of anything? So, they programmed you to enjoy fear. In as much as you think you don't enjoy it, you love it. When you walk into a place and people look at you, oh, that's the righteous place. Oh, you can't, you love it. You try, it, 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 it gives you something in you. Fear. Fear. The most Fearful people on the face of this earth is Christians, or let me say, are Christians. I'm telling you. Fear. People would fear. When we talk about fear, we talk about terror. What kind of a people that is so called created in love? enjoys people being terrified of them. Imagine you're in a house with your father and you are terrified of your father. Is it a good environment to be in? Let's continue. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in good. This is not talking about spiritual blessings. Material in good, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground. In the land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers to give thee, first and foremost, that is a stealing land. That is a theft case. Because he didn't have any land to give. He swore the land of other people to give to. According to the Bible, I'm not making this up. And the Lord shall open thee into his good treasure, which is the treasures of other people, other tribes, other nations. There's nothing that the God of the Bible will say is for him that is actually for him. We all know this. Come on. You know this. And the heaven, in his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season and to bless all the works of thy hands. The heaven to give its rain. The heavens to give the rain. 
if the God of the Bible was in charge of the heaven, he would say, and I would give you rain from the heavens. That's not saying that. He said, and the heavens would give the rain. That's understanding very well that the heavens holds the key to rain. Think about it. Who is sitting in the heavens that is regulating and controlling rain? In the season to bless all the work of thy hands, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. Really? If you keep if you keep his laws, you shall lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. How did Abraham become rich? No, let's how did Abraham, you shall not borrow? How did Abraham become rich? You shall not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. Competition, fight, strife. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. They are revealing their tactics, telling you their race, their people shall always be the head and never the tail, and certain people are always supposed to be the ones at the tail. These are the tales that they tell their children and their children's children and their grandchildren to ensure that they know this lesson, that the only people that is supposed to be the tail are the people that don't look like them. And they are always supposed to be the head. This is the programming. They are always supposed to be the head. And you are supposed to be the tail. And everybody that comes along that does not look like them because the God that they follow is making them the head. First and foremost, if we check the world today, and the excuse is if you obey the commandments, that's the excuse. If you check the world today, who is the superpower of the world? No, no. I'm not saying what the media is telling you. I'm not saying what the generation is feeding you with. Who is the superpower of the world today? You don't get it. Who is the entire world depending on for their sustainability? Are you seeing that? They always knew this, but they had to program it and rewire you to think that you are supposed to be the tail and they become the head. And so long as they are the head, the tail is constantly supposed to follow what the head is saying. That is how come the entire world is being mobilized and moved and, and, and structured by a few people who sit at the head. This is the programming right here. If thou hearken unto the commandment of the Lord thy God which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. Who, in the, who are the people on the face of this earth that are more observant, more observing, more willing to learn, more willing to give in, more willing to serve? So if any, any people at all could obey the commandment, who are those that could have obey the commandment? If this is what it is. Naturally, we have those who will serve naturally. And naturally, we have those who are not designed to serve. And when I talk about serving, I'm not talking about slavery. I'm talking about servitude to one another. Servitude to our brothers and sisters. I'm talking about servitude and care to the plants, to the animals, to the trees. Servitude to nature. I'm talking about servitude to every single thing that is around us. This is the servitude I'm talking about. 
When you take certain, I'm not naming any names, but take certain races into a room and let's see who is quick to serve and who is quick to be the head over the one that is quick to serve. So which group of people could have actually obeyed? And which group of people were designed to be in servitude? Not just to those in this dimension, but those beyond this dimension. This is the programming right here. They are always supposed to be the head. And you are. If this is not the programming, then I, do you mean to tell me these people that are controlling the world today are the ones that are obeying the God of the Bible? If this is true, If the Bible is true, then it means these people are doing everything the God of the Bible desires for them to do. That is why they're getting all the blessings. That is why they have all the control. That is why they are stealing all the resources because apparently stealing is a part of the commandment that when you do, you get blessed. According to the God of the Bible. Raping our resources, raping our land. You think it was only, you know, rape is only about our women? Raping our forest. These people are doing everything opposite to what the God of the Bible said. When you do, you'll be blessed. But yet, these people have more resources and gold in their reserves than any person on the face of the earth. Is the God of the Bible asleep? Is he in slumber? How is he not seeing that these people are destroying and disobeying everything and therefore they are supposed to be the least? But yet, some way, somehow, they still sit on top. While you, that is constantly having your Bible in your armpit, going to church and praying, oh, praise God, you are constantly on the low while they are constantly on the rise. What's wrong with you guys? When are you going to wake up to this reality that this is to program you? You know I love you. I'll always tell you the truth. I always wish I have time to do this every day. But I know I'm coming strong next time. Let's keep going deeper. I'll continue from verses 13. Love you guys. Mwah.